today discover a financial services company through its head into South Africa's competitive banking sector with uh, the announcement of uh, its formal launch. With plans to open to the public in March next year, Discovery Bank is set to become, quote, the first behavioral bank in South Africa. Is that in the world, Adrian? I think it is in the world. It could be in the world. Yes, yeah. Adrian Go is the CEO of Discovery. Thanks for coming through, uh, Adrian. Just explain again what you're doing today, because I know we've been speaking about this impending day for quite a while. And I think, you know, us in the media, we say we want to talk to you guys when there is news. But this one, we're happy to track, because as you know, we all want competition within this banking sector. What did you do today? Well, today, today in effect, we launched the bank. Right. Uh, it's full value proposition. We'll be open for testing. So it's kind of a beta launch, which means the entire proposition is out there. But we're going to have 3,000 of our staff hopefully uh, phase into testing it for three months um, and then open to the public. So right. we've got to announce what the proposition is and how the bank works right. uh, to start that testing process. We've been in testing for about a year anyway. So this is a very big undertaking. It's got a lot of different pipes and yeah. systems and structures. So it's got to be done in a, a very careful way. Absolutely. I know there's a huge unemployment problem in South Africa, but if you're announcing that only staff are going to get uh, uh, these accounts, you might well get a stampede at your uh, swank offices up uh, the road from here. In terms of uh, what you're going to be offering the market, let's talk about what you're bringing in. That is different. That will make a difference in terms of South Africa's competitive landscape. So I, I would say, to and I'll say it with, with the utmost respect, I think you, you've got a, a, a the big banks that are traditional. In this country, I think they're exceptionally good. They're strong, they're well-run, they're high-tech. But they're quite, I mean, they're traditional, they're transactional, and they do a great job. Mm. I think in the other extreme, you've got the fintechs that are emerging that are very thin, almost to an extent, you don't need a bank, you need an app and an account and whatever. And I think that also obviously has a place. Our approach has been, um, I mean, today I think we gave the rationale behind it, but our approach has been the, the concept that our model of engaging people and trying to get them to make the right lifestyle choices to, to have a better life has been at the core of the discovery model, a shared value. We get you to behave better, yeah. we're more profitable, and we can share that profit with you in terms of incentives. Sure. So that's exactly what we're doing in banking, as, uh, you, know, the, as, the, as the you know. The behavioral bank aspect Behavioral banking, people, this country is amongst the worst, unfortunately, the, the worst uh, uh, statistics about household saving being remarkably low. You know, four, four to 10 percent of people are going to get retirement in an acceptable form of rest or not. Sure. So just four so the vitality mindset is, yeah. is, is a concept of, of kind of guiding people, incentivizing them, getting behavior change. So the bank has been built on exactly the shared value model, vitality money, yeah. the idea of actually guiding people about their choices regarding how they well they manage their money, yeah. providing strong incentives and reflects interest rates based on how you engage. Right. And then also strong incentives around discounts in our partner network that are pretty substantial. So adding the health and the money yeah. aspect together. Yeah. And then I think the opportunity for us has been the, the, the advent of technology around um, just the FinTech and all the stuff you can do. The bank has been built on the latest technology. So it's real time, it's seamless, yeah. all the accounts are integrated. Yeah. So it's kind of a synthesis, I think, of, of what you can do in a modern bank today yeah. together with this behavioral model. And I, I think the proposition is very, very strong. Absolutely. When you launched Discovery years ago, I remember the way Whispers in the market, what does he think he's doing? How is he going to come up and shake up these big boys who are established, they've got deep roots? And then years later, I had, no, it's unsustainable. The, the kind of commissions and centers that they're offering are unsustainable. This thing is not going to work. I guess the same questions will come and they will be asked again when you come into the banking sector, as you come into the banking sector. What are you targeting in terms of uh, uh, a client? And then secondly, I'm going to ask you a question. You may well not give me an answer that I want. What share of the market? Well, I think, listen, the, the, you know, the, banking, the banking regulation requires very careful planning. So the bank is built on a very careful five-year plan, capital, membership, every single aspect has been has been projected and stressed. I mean, that's the, the, the structure. Having said that, you know, you start a business, it never plays out as you expect. Sure. Things meander and change. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've learned in building a proper institutional business, you need five years. It takes you sure. five years to get to scale, and you've got to do things slowly and carefully and yeah. properly with the right capital. So that's, that's in fact, kind of what we're doing. Um, uh, in terms of market share, I, d I mean, we have a natural market of, our c of the discovery covered community, which is about two million adults, and it's a very, very, how can I say, it's, 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 a, it's the performance of the discovery card illustrated to us how well that sector banks and, and their kind of behavior, so we, we're using that as an obvious platform. Yeah. Um, but if we can penetrate that discovery community well, yeah. I think the prospects for the bank are very, very good. Um, so, so, I mean, we've done a lot of analysis. We haven't divulged market shares, as you've suggested. 
but it's a big market. Yeah. Know, bank market is not a small market. If you get a reasonable market share, yeah. Yeah. you can build a reasonable size bank. The discovery card got to over 10% of the of, of the market. Of the market in terms of the credit card. Over book, how many um, years? Over in its first five years, I think, first seven sure. years. But I mean, that's a lot easier to do it. You know, a credit card is is different to a, a full scale bank where people have to change bank accounts. Yeah. So this is not a simple thing. It will take us time. But I must say, I think today we felt it came together better than we expected. I think the discovery shared value model just clicked in yeah. uh, well. Are you slightly uneasy about coming back and taking on your former parent? First um, no, I mean, listen, I think we had a JV. This is direct competition, isn't it? Yeah, listen, we had a JV with them on the discovery call for a while. Yes. Uh, they were a remarkably strong bank. They were well run. They are hugely, uh, hugely powerful competitors. But the reality is, over the extraction of the discovery card out of first round, all the competitive issues have been aired. Yeah. Uh, there's very good feeling, very good faith, but they face competitors, and I think they're remarkably good. Yeah. That's how it is. Absolutely. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the kind of person that you are after. So I'll ask it in a simplistic manner. Are you a bank for rich people only? No. No, in fact, I think quite the... I don't think the opposite. I think the people that manage their money well will do well with us. I think people so the that manage their money I think that well. people do manage their money well, and therefore other income segments that manage their money well will do well with us. But in fact, quite the opposite. You know, the vitality structure in health has been about making people healthier. Yeah. So ironically, if you're sick, you can get better value out of it because you, you know, we're trying to guide you to get your health better. Sure. And we've learned this around the world around the fact that it's got to be agnostic to your state of health. That same set of principles has been built into vitality money. So this is not about people who are upper income. This is about yeah. no matter what your income level is, you can get to a high status by managing your money well. Yeah. Yeah. So the irony of it is I would argue it offers it will offer considerable value to people sure. who are prepared to manage their money well regardless of their income level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it, 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 it particularly isn't about that. Absolutely. That's so so when, when you talk about uh, the established banks, obviously one of the questions that people come up with is, uh, are you going to be building branches like you know these other guys have done, bricks and mortar, etc.? What will a discovery bank look like? It won't have any. It won't have any branches. We'll have one branch in our main head office that, that's more kind of a, 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 a structured place where people can go to. But the, the um, this is the, the bank is just in the face of the mobile, and it's it's not a fintech play because. You don't need to go to a branch. I mean, the, the app we've developed and the technology, it's, it's, it's actually quite, I think it's beautiful. It looks good. You can see all, vitali all the stuff. You can access everything. You can manage your, your PIN. You can manage everything. You can open an account in three, literally three minutes. It's remarkable. We use the most sure. sophisticated facial recognition linked to home affairs. It's a very, very complex piece of technology. But the truth of it is, um, it's, it is omni-channel. So if you need to phone, you want to speak to people with experience, they'll be available. So on it's this is not a fintech bank, but I don't see that there's no need for branches. It's for us that could be wasteful. Sure. Um, if I want cash, what do I do? There are point of service areas you will be able to get cash. You can use any ATM. So we linked into the ATM networks. So depending on what you, you do, the ATMs are available. So this will have every physical kind of attribute I think you need yeah. for cash and everything, but we won't have specific branches. Uh, we don't see that as a... I am going heavily on the consumer because obviously that's where I come from. But I'm imagining you are offering a bigger product suite than just going after the consumer. You're also going after business banking. No, not initially. No. This is no. And in fact, if you look at Discovery's history, we typically start with the individual consumer in the retail space and then we start moving our way if we do. We don't see that initially. I mean, uh, of course, there are... I think over time we very we, we see excitement in the small... SMEs are intermediaries, doctors. Now, there's, 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 there's a very good market I think we're going to add value to, but the initial offering that we launched today is about a retail offering yeah. to the individual consumer. Today is a symbolic day, of course, because you formally launched the bank, so I wanted to look at what your share price did. I see it's up 1.5%, uh, but of course, I think when we look over the, 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 the years, Discovery's graph is something like, I was going to say Herr Hitler, but no, that's not appropriate, but certainly we'll be shooting um, upwards. So sorry, Adrian, in terms of uh, the, 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 the offering that you are going to be bringing to the market, how will you ensure that you're not charging the same interest rates that are being charged by the other guys? You have been uh, uh, very uh, focused in terms of innovation. What are you bringing that we should look forward to? Well, I think there's, there's a few things. I think the, the first idea is that we, we, we're going to help people understand their financial affairs uh, in a way that's sucked into their mobile and they'll earn vitality points for doing the right thing. But the key issue here is the concept of dynamic interest rates. So our sense is now interest rates are largely kind of opaque. You get a rate of interest, you don't control it, you don't see it. The concept here is that as you, you manage your vitality money status, as you manage your money, 
your rate of you get a dynamic borrowing rate, that rate will come down 1% per status that you go up. And in fact, it will go up 50 basis points uh, on savings. Wow. So the idea is you will see kind of the variability of the interest rates as you manage your money. That's the core idea behind the program. So our sensibility is that it's kind of democratizing interest rates. It's making them transparent. You control them. You see them. It's fair. Um, the other critical thing that we've done is, is we've used the vitality network and the kind of the economics growth of our managing health. Yeah. So all of our partners to actually add together the discounts you get on health and on managing your money. So you get, you get real great value, 75%, up to 75% of healthy food with Woolworths mm -hmm. and pick and pay. You get flights up to 75%. You get, sure. you know, so we're really taking that vitality chassis and really leveraging it when you add together the economics coming out of both managing your health, your mortality and managing your money. Absolutely. Adrian, thank you for your time today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.